We give God praise. We give him glory. And we bless his name. Amen. Well, bless God, this morning in the book of Romans, I want to use my time wisely today because we have had earlier meeting. And so I'm not rushing, but I want to use your time and my time wisely uh, in making sure we have time to get into the word and receive it today. Amen. Amen. Today I'm talking about faith and how faith works in our life. And we've been talking about faith is simply believing God. Everybody say that with me. Faith is, faith is. simply believing God. Other words, when we say simply, we're simplifying faith that so many people have made this discussion a discussion of work and action. So I've heard over the years in which uh, it's not that all of it is wrong. It's just the way we apply it and understand it. If you don't get the basics and you don't get the foundation of faith, then you can't operate in faith. And so you've been told faith is acting on the word. And so we're trying to act on. And we said, well, Jesus saw the men when they let him down in the roof and they unroofed the roof. And, and Jesus saw their faith. And so we've always equated that the only thing the Lord is looking for is what we do. But you cannot do unless you believe. I'm under the persuasion after I examine and study, not only did he saw the roof on roof, it wasn't the roof that he uh, 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 was looking at. It wasn't the window they were trying to get in or the door. But he said to the man, your sins are forgiven. And then they inquired to him, why did you make that statement? Why did he didn't just tell him to get up off his bed? See, when he said his sins are forgiven, Jesus was trying to start this paralyzed man in Mark chapter 2 with the basics of you got to believe me. So once he told him you're forgiven of your sins, then you ought to believe you're healed. Once you're forgiven of your sins, then you ought to believe your needs are met. Once you're forgiven of your sins, then you ought to believe doors are open unto you. And so Jesus said to him, your sins are forgiven you. So I'm under persuasion as we look at the scripture today that Jesus was under this persuasion and under this influence to get us to believe the word of God. Amen. 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 He wanted us to do what? Believe the word of God. That's where it starts. You can't act on what you don't believe. Those four men carried that man to that house because they believed Jesus was able to heal him. Right. Amen. Amen. Turn me up a little bit, please. He believed that Jesus was able to heal uh, heal of his sickness and his disease. That's right. And so that's why they carry. And he saw the fact that they were in agreement. Right. The Bible said, if two or three shall touch and agree, there I am in the midst. He asked one man in one passage, do you believe I can do this? That's what he asked the blind man. Do you believe that I can do this? So the key to your healing, the key to your breakthrough, the key to your deliverance, the key to your financial situation is do you believe God is able to do it? So let's start in Romans and then I'm going to walk you through some things and, and help you understand. And I'm, I've been going back and forth with this weekly and it's been blessing me. It's helping me if it's not helping you. Because we need to remind ourselves of some things unless we allow them to slip. In Romans chapter 4 in verse number 1. What? Then shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh. What can we say about Abraham, our father? What has he found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. Did y'all get that? So Abraham can say, I did this and I did this. How many say, Lord, I did this in your name and I did that in your name and I did that. But see, when we get to certain situations where we can't handle it ourselves, we become discouraged because we never believed God. We were only doing it out of our own means. Right. Jeremiah says, cursed is the man that trusts in the flesh. And make flesh as God. And so when you think it's all about you, when it's all about your job, when it's all about, no, you have nothing to boast about. The Bible says in Ephesians, we are saved by grace through faith, lest any man should boast. So what does that mean in layman's term? That is by God's power and divine favor that we are saved. Jesus died for us once and for all. And through that grace, we are saved through faith, which means we believe it. Amen. Is there anybody believe it? Amen. It's not about what you've done. It's not how many drugs or how much drugs you use and how illicit you were. And, what, and we come up talking about how God saved us. We all saved if we never did anything Amen. by believing on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what it says in Acts 16. Believe on the Lord and you shall be saved. You and your whole house. Anybody believe that today? So it's not works. Our life is not based on works. And we're examining that. Faith is simply you got to believe God. Amen. 
Well, I paid my tithes and Lord, nothing happened. I've done this and nothing happened. I prayed about my sickness and nothing happened. Do you believe it? So run into meeting after meeting, somebody laying hands on you, making you oily. It, it does. Yes, we ought to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But these signs shall follow them that believe. No signs can follow if you don't believe it. Yes, all of my needs are met according to his riches and glory, but I got to believe it. It's not how many jobs, it's not how many businesses I open. And if I only had my own business, no, I got to believe God because there's people that's made and had business and still end up on the bottom. Right. Bible said we ought to have good success in the Lord. So it's giving you Abraham, the father of faith. They're giving you an example. Father Abraham had many sons and many sons had father Abraham. I'm one of them and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. But let's see how it works for him. Everybody say, let's see how it works. For him. All right, Abraham was justified by his work. He has something to boast about. So we can boast about what we have done. That's why too many people put stock in themselves. Are uh, you understanding me? I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do this. How many know you can make it in your life by believing God? He ought to have anything to boast before God. Verse 3, everybody read aloud. What does it say? For what does the scripture say? Verse 3 says, what does the scripture say? Verse 3 says, what does the scripture say? Everybody say this with me. That's the bottom line to my life and my success is what the scripture says. See, we're trying to follow everybody's philosophy, everybody's principle. Anything you're hearing and living in life that's going to cause success, you've got to equate it to the scriptures. There's such thing as good success and there's such thing as bad success. And what you equating as success may not be success in God. What is success in God? Seek first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness and all other things. You're going to see that later. Jesus came preaching the kingdom. Amen. Jesus came to everybody preaching the kingdom. Amen. Amen. So it says, what does the scripture say? That's the bottom line. We got to have our conviction about the word of God, not about what everybody else is saying, not man's philosophy according to Colossians. They're preaching the philosophy of men. Uh, he said in Galatians, what has caused you to uh, slip and get back into the wrong stuff because we start listening to the wrong thing. That's right. What you have to be listening for, anytime somebody's teaching and preaching in the name of the Lord, you're listening for what the scriptures say. And what you have to do is take it, examine it, uh, uh, eliminate what it's not saying, and, and receive what it is saying. Amen. How many heard this? Well, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Come on, how many heard his wonders? To, how many quoted it and heard it from your mama, your grandmama? Uh, come on, all of your life. Amen. God bless the fool that has his own. How many heard it? But see, that's not what the scripture. Mama told me I better... Don't, don't get quiet. See, it's not in the scripture. But these are the slogans and sayings that we are living our lives by. Uh -huh. The Lord is not mysterious. He, he's not a mystery. The Bible says in Ephesians, God has made his mysteries, one in nine, made, uh, known unto us. Anybody believe that? Yeah. Ephesians 5 says we ought to understand what the will of the Lord is and no longer walk as fools and uncircumspectly, but perfectly. Uh, uh, and that's in Ephesians 5. Romans 12, we ought to prove what is that good and acceptable and what? Perfect will of God. So how many know you can be in the good will of God and you can be in the acceptable will of God, but not be in the perfect will of God? Because, see, you're doing something. I believe you, but I'm going to do it by my works. I'm going to do it by my action. Lord, I tried and I tried. How many said it? God, I'm trying to do right. God don't want you to just try to do right. He wants you to believe him first. You got to equate your life to what does God say? Amen. Do you understand that? Amen. Come on, this says in John 1 and 1, in the beginning, I know I'm quoting a lot, so I want you to get all this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And everything that was made was made by it, the Word. And without the Word was not anything made that was made. And the Word became flesh. 
and dwelt among. And he came unto his own, and his own would not receive him. John chapter 1. But as many, verse 12, received him, to them he gave the right or the power to become the sons of God. So in other words, it's all about you believing the word that was in the beginning. The word that created everything. The word that made everything. Rome, uh, Hebrews 11 said, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So you have to have this conviction. What does the scripture say? What does God say? The, the word is power to everyone that believes, Romans uh, 1, 16. Well, God is a mysterious. God don't do this. You know, maybe God put this cancer on me. That means you don't know the word. God gave me, how many other people say, God gave me this cancer to teach me a lesson? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Come on, I heard people say, I'm like uh, uh, Paul, uh, when he was saw, God knocked me off my horse and had to teach me something. You won't see nothing in the scripture about Paul riding a horse. <laughs> but you watch the movie, and the movie is not the scripture. So you're living your life, come on, going through life, waiting for God to knock you down. Because we've been taught the wrong character of God. So it's hard to believe something that you don't understand. It's hard to trust someone that you don't know. Because the only way to know them, you got to get in the word to see what the scripture says. What is God? He's a good God according to the scripture. What is he capable of doing? He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that ask or think. Where is he? In him I live, move, and have my being. How powerful is he? Greater is he that is in me than whatever is going on in the world. Come on. Do I lose or do I win? Thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph. So if I'm in God, I'm winning all the time. If I'm in God, I'm the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. If I'm in the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, Jehovah Rohi, and I shall not want, and he make me to lie down. He leads me besides. Yea, do I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. The Lord is with me. Come on, I, I know I'm putting all the verses together. He prepares tables in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with my cup. Run it though. I can't be empty. My cup is overflowing. The joy of the Lord, Nehemiah 8 and 10, is my strength. God is working on your behalf. God wants to prove himself to you. And so what he needs to do is for you to believe him. You can't act on what you don't believe. You can't live by what you don't believe. See, belief is having a conviction. Having confidence, faith is our confidence in God's word that whatever God promised. So you got to get excited about some stuff you already know and not doing. That's why you can't be a hearer of the word. You got to be a doer of the word. And doing is the first thing is to believe. So I might look at your neighbor and say, what does the scripture say? Tell them that's all I got to talk about. Say what you think, what you think. Don't, mount <laughs> think. don't mount up to a hill of beans. Say what I think, don't mount up to a hill of beans. Say I got to live my life, live my life. Based, on based on what the scripture says. Say. Ask them, do you know any? How many today believe the scripture that God will supply all your need according to his? Anybody believe that? Anybody believe in scripture? God loves a cheerful giver and able to make all grace abound towards him. That he'll have what? All sufficiency of all things. And how many believe he gives you seed to sow? That's how you get increased. And he multiplies the seed so. So if I don't sow the seed, I don't believe God is able to increase the seed. Does anybody believe Psalm 107 verse 20? I know I quote these all the time. Uh, 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 he sent his word and healed us. Anybody believe uh, 1 Peter 2, 24 and Isaiah 53, by his stripes, we are healed. Come on, anybody read, believe Romans 8, we are more than a conqueror through him that, I'm just trying to tap into some believers. I'm trying to tell you what the scriptures say. Ask your neighbor, why are you talking defeated? Come on, ask him, why are you not winning? 
Say, you got to believe this thing. Tell him it's not what you're going through that makes the difference. Tell him it's what the scriptures say. Ask him, do I have any believers in the house? Believers ought to shout loud. Hallelujah. You can't accept this sickness and disease as it's the will of God. You can't accept poverty and lack as it's the will of God. You can't accept defeat as it's the will of God. You can't accept what the devil is doing and the devil doing this and the devil doing that without taking authority over the devil. But this is what we've been doing and people are getting up because they're preaching from what they're going through. And when stuff happened, we can't explain. I remember when uh, uh, one of the pastors that passed uh, in the Bahamas and everybody was so baffled and confused. And they said, as a great man of God, and, and we don't know why God did this and God took him home. See, you start blaming God for stuff God is not responsible for. How many know you got an enemy that comes to steal, to kill and destroy? What is he stealing from you? He's stealing from you your knowledge. People are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Come on, how do you feed a, uh, defeat an army? You got to take out the generals. You got to take out each soldier. You got to cause people to start looking at the circumstance, the man instead of the God we serve. Listen to me. If I die tonight, I got another building not made by hand. If this earthly tabernacle was to dissolve. So God always have a winning plan for what the enemies done. We have an adversary. Yes, sir. And you got to be alert and wise and smart and strong. Yes. And after you have suffered a while, God will perfect you, establish you, and strengthen you. Yes. Suffering comes with the territory. Yes. Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. Yes. I know I can read on and go on, but I'm trying to get you to understand what the scripture said. Yes. Do I have any believers in here that believe the word of God? Is the word greater than what you're going through? Is the word bigger than the world you live in? Is the word able to sustain you? But you know why we're struggling? People are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. We don't know what the scripture says. And then we come to church, we jump when they're singing, they praise him for an hour, the music is bumped, we just clubbing in the church. We're electric sliding. We're doing every worldly dance. Come on, y'all. They got it. We're shaking our buttocks. We're bouncing around. We got the praise going on, but it ain't but 15 minutes a word. And then if you don't get a word and you get my opinion and you get me telling you this, this going to happen and that going to happen and you never get a word, you ain't got nothing to live on. You got to get past the man that you know this word is from everlasting to everlasting. You got to get past the person where you know not one title of this word will change. You got to get past that. You got to say, give me some word. Is there a word from the Lord? We have no scripture discipline. Abraham was not justified by his work unless he had something to boast. What does the scripture say? Abraham did what? Read the verse. Abraham what? I know I'm, I'm reading this every week. I get excited about it every week and so should you. Abraham did what? Abraham did what? Abraham did what? And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace but a debt. But to him who does not work but believes. Him who does not work but believes. Now, this is going to get you over to James. We're going to get there eventually again and cross-examine. Because yes. we don't understand what James was talking about. Amen. But he who does not work but believes on him who justified the ungodly, his faith is accounted at for what? Righteousness. See, the ungodly, his faith is accounted for what? How many heard he's righteous and because he's righteous, we are righteous? Yeah. 
How many heard this? My prayer and desire, Romans 10, is for Israel that they might be saved. Because I bear record, they have a zeal of God. They have enthusiasm, but not according to righteousness. They being ignorant, and not according to knowledge, they being ignorant of God's righteousness, has gone about to establish their what? Own righteousness, and have not submitted themselves to the righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of it right and all other things will be. So what is righteousness? Righteousness means to be straight with God, to be upright, to believe God, to trust God. Y'all follow me? When I'm lined up precept by precept, when I know his word and live by his word, it's the righteousness of God that causes me to be in right standing. Because Jesus shed his blood while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Hebrews said he saved us to the utmost. So I don't have to get re-saved. I don't need to be saved over again. There's nobody else that can save me. There's no other name under heaven and earth whereby men can be saved other than the name of Jesus. But this preacher and this speaker, they said there's another way to heaven other than Jesus. They lying to you. I'll tell you what does the scripture say. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. I said, no man comes to the Father but by me. So all this stuff you're hearing, there's other ways to get saved. There's other ways to have it. God is inclusive. I know these famous people, and because they got money, you chasing behind what they say. God is inclusive. Everybody don't have to. Because if I eliminate Jesus, I can eliminate righteousness. And if I eliminate righteousness, then we can live like we want to live. And all dogs go to heaven. That's what they're telling you. But I'm letting you know today, all dogs don't go to heaven. God so loved, you better get this, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever would believe in him shall not perish. Believe in who? His son. But they'll have everlasting life. So if you're not a believer, all dogs don't go to heaven. You can't put everybody in heaven, everybody that die, everybody that, oh, everybody get up now. They're on their way to heaven. They sing and they rapping with God. They selling drugs up there in heaven. Come on, they drinking whiskey with God. You a lie, ain't no truth in you. They partying with God. They up there dancing. You a lie, ain't no truth in you. You better know what the scriptures say. 1 John 5, 11 and 12. I know I'm reminding you every week, but this is what gives me assurance. This is what lets me know in my father's house is many mansions. This is why I'm not in a hurry to die. If this earthly tabernacle dissolves, I got another building. I already know where I'm going. Righteousness is about his word. 1 John 5, 11 and 12. This is the record God has given us eternal life, and that life is in his. That life is in his. He that has the son of God has eternal life. Yeah. He that doesn't have them don't have eternal life. I had a person knock on my door once and they wanted to share uh, uh, their gospel or their religion. And, and I said, do you believe in Jesus? No, we don't quite believe in Jesus. You know, we know he was a good man, a good prophet. I said, well, that's good. I said, you have a Bible in your briefcase? He said, yeah, I got a Bible. I said, pull it out for me. I won't even touch your Bible. Uh-huh. I said, could you please turn? If you got a Bible, turn to this first, first John 5, 11 and 12. Right. And they standing at my front door on an early Saturday morning. And, and I said, read it aloud, please. And they said, this is the record. I said, keep reading. God has given us eternal life. I said, read on, reader. And this life is in his son. And everyone that has the son has life. And everyone that don't have him, I said, go to 1 John chapter 2. And he read, I said, read, please. He says, he that has the father has the son also. And he that has the son has the father. I said, how dare you knock on my door early in the morning expecting to come in my living room and you don't believe. I said, turn over to John where he said, if a man comes to your house and he does not believe that Jesus is Lord, if he doesn't believe the scripture, don't have company with him. Don't bid him God speed. I said, so you can't come in. I said, I don't want you woke me up early this morning for me to preach to you. I said, what you need to do is put your Bible back in your briefcase. You need to go back to your house and fall down on your knees and say, God, I read it. God, I saw it. God, I know what the truth is, but I need help to believe. Yeah. 
All these discussions y'all having in psychology and class, some of y'all just got so educated you're just plain stupid. Yeah. <laughs> You're sitting in all these group theory and classes, and they tell you all of this. I, my first religion class at Syracuse University, Religion 101, we had five steps to prove that God don't exist. And the guy gave you his philosophy, our book for that class. I signed up for the class because I'm thinking I'm going to go in here, prepare myself. I knew I was going to preach later, so I might as well get this religion in me now. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Now, I grew up in the church, but I thought at the college level, I need to educate myself. Are y'all following me? <laughs> I thought education. <laughs> Y'all find, and I sit in there and this guy's talking crazy. My professor had a long ponytail and came in there with some jeans and a vest on. And he said at the beginning of class, if you don't believe these theories and if you cannot prove these theories that God don't exist, you will get an F. And he put beside an F in this class. He said, does anybody dare challenge me and try to prove anything otherwise? They must prove it without scripture. Now, why without scripture? Because he don't want you to go to that ancient book. But he's going to read some book where some man turned to a wolf. And you're going to believe that book that this guy went on the mountain and his spirit transformed and he became a wolf. But I ain't a wolf believer. Are y'all following me? I'm a Jesus believer. And why can I use the scripture if you use some other philosophy and some other book? Because if I use the scripture, it's going to override your philosophy. If I use the scripture, it might convince somebody. If I use the scripture, it may change my heart. If you use the scripture, you may invite God into this class. If you use the scripture, the spirit may move. And we don't want that to happen. So if y'all want to know what I got in that class, I got a big fat F. <laughs> Because all year I battled him with writing. Every time I wrote my thesis, he would strike everything out, had red writing all over it, and he put F at the bottom of the paper. Amen. And he write, you got to go back to the five points I gave you and until you can convince me. Yes. Now, some people say, well, you got to do what you got to do just to get an A. No. No. But see, if you're a believer, you don't do what you got to do. That's what's wrong with some of y'all A's right now. Are y'all following me? <laughs> That's where your A is messed up at. Are y'all following me? Because you're going, <laughs> oh, I messed up there. You're going alone to get along. That's where your A is at. You got an A. You holding your A right in your hand. Are y'all following me? That's right. Your A getting whooped. Because we live in this life, we abandon the scripture. I got to move the new stuff, man. Verse 5, but him who does the work, uh, uh, him who does not work but believes. Him who does not work but what? Believe. believe. On him, on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Ungodly, the ungodly, his faith is accounted for So you can be ungodly, come to Christ, believe him, and he will take your ungodliness and put you in right standing. And we are righteous because he is righteous. And he's given us the word of reconciliation to go to men and tell them that God loves you and God is calling you back. Are y'all following me? Let's walk this journey. Praise the Lord. A am I quoting too much? Too much scripture? Am I too excited about it? Anybody else excited about it here? How many believe your hope is in the word of God? Some men sit out to be motivational speakers to en entice you or whatever they do. And I listen for the word. Amen. I don't care how much you got to say. If you ain't open up no scripture, sit down. Amen. And if you want to stand up, then this is a motivational meeting. But what you going to do with that motivation right. when his words run out? So I don't do things just to get along in the crowd. I got that F graciously. I wrote every paper, but it was contradicted to what the class said. And the guy would say, all y'all that believe in the scripture in class, he said, you can't even comment in the class. We don't want to hear from you. So I had other believers in there, other Christians, they pulled me aside, man, you got to get this A. And I took religion because it's an easy A. I said, you took a religion so you can abandon God. That's right. That's right. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> easy A. Well, just an easy A going to help my, my GPA. So you just going to go along with something just to go along? All y'all looking at me crazy because a whole lot of y'all done done it. Then you come out here feeling good. I'm a good writer. See, I was able to prove that. And, and, and see, now your education has superseded your uh, uh, salvation. That's right. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
They've been ignorant of God's righteousness. And so you inflated your, 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 your GPA. Listen to me. A lot of people inflate their GPA. Even some people pay folk take tests for them. But so you got people working in professional fields right now that don't have a clue. Because it's the small foxes and the little foxes that spoil the body. So if you cheat in one area, you cheat in another area. So when you get on your job, you fill out stuff pretending you know it, pretending you know how to do the job. You put out false resumes. You file false tax returns. Don't look at me crazy. Because, see, when you do it in one area, you marry falsely. You have no intent. You already got uh, some paper signed. If this don't work out, uh, y'all fine. You got your own savings account. You over here. So you ain't expecting this marriage to work. Yeah. You don't change your name. You hyphenate it because you ain't planning to keep his name the rest of your life. Don't look at me funny. It's that A that you got. Because, see, you got to believe what you believe, and you got to live for what you believe, and you got to die for what you believe, and you got to stand on what you believe, no matter what. In this world, in our church now, we're trying to be too convenient to everybody. It ain't nothing about the scripture. People having their opinion. Well, I don't have nothing wrong with homosexuality. It ain't what you have. You can bend that way. You've done whatever. you got to see what the scripture says. Right. Jesus said in Matthew 19, from the beginning, God created male and female. Yeah. And what God has put together, let no man put a son. He wasn't talking about your marriage. He's talking about male and female. Uh -huh. That's right. So we don't have no discussion. Yeah. Well, let me give you my opinion. You can have an opinion, but I'm walking. I'm going with what the scripture says. Well, what about these feelings? So if I have feelings for the same sex, what's wrong? God gave me these feelings. Don't you fool yourself. Come on, what if you stick your finger in a light socket and you like the way it feels and you get electrocuted? Do you think God told you to put your finger in the light socket? Just because you like the way something feels doesn't mean that's the way. I'm helping somebody. I, 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 you say, man, I'm just breaking it down straight. Thank you, Jesus. When I work with uh, uh, nuts and bolts, they have a male and a female. Am I not right? When I work with electricity, they got a male and a female. Am I not right? When you plug the socket in, they got a male and a female. You can't socket the socket. Are y'all following me? Because socket the socket won't result in power. You ain't going to get no power if I take another socket and line it over here with this socket. All I do is I got socket to socket. See, you can socket to whoever you want to socket to, but that ain't what the scriptures say. If I take two male prongs and go over here to the plug and just put them together, I still don't have no power. So that means because I got a male to a male, there is no power. So therefore, Romans 1, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to everyone that believes. To everyone that believes. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. It says in verse 17, in the gospel, God has revealed himself. I know I'm hammering this nail. And this coffin ought to be shut by now. Y'all following me? But I want to make sure this dead body don't get out of this coffin. So I got one more nail to put in this coffin. And then we're going to bury it ashes to ashes and dust to dust. We're going to let God arise and the enemy be defeated. We are going to put the word ahead of everything. And I'm supposed to back down because people don't like this nowadays. They ain't what they want. Come on, you want God more than anything. You want eternity more than anything. You want righteousness more than anything. Hebrews 11, 6. I got to use my time wisely. I get so excited about this every week. I, I just can't help myself. Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11 and 6. Praise him. But without faith, without faith, faith is our conviction, our confidence in God. If you look up the word faith right here, it means conviction, belief, mm -hmm. confidence. Amen. Says nothing about action and work. Amen. You can't do the action and work without believing. That's right. Yeah. The word pistis that comes from faith here is if you look it up, go home and check me, you will see nothing in there about what you do. It's about what you believe. 
and then you act on what you believe. You're doing as a result of belief. or other words, you're wasting time. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He who comes to God, he who comes to God, I'm reading it every week, what? Must believe that he is, and he is a? Reward. You got to believe he is, and you got to believe he's a rewarder. Yes. Yes. Of them that diligently seek him. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes, Mark 11, 22, 23, it said, have faith in God. And, and then verse 23 says, uh, surely I say unto you. Surely I what? Yes. Say unto you. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea, and does not doubt. Where? In his heart. But he does what? Believe. Come on, talk to me real loud. But he does what? Believe. Believe that those things, those things he says will be done. He'll have whatever he says. See, you're going to have whatever you say regardless. That's right. But do you believe those things? Well, I ain't going to make it. Well, this thing is killing me. You're going to be dead. Because right. whatever you believe and say is what you're going to have. You're right. you're right. But you got to have faith in God. Praise him, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise him. Come on, Mark 9, 23 and 24. Mark 9, 23 and 24. Mark 9, 23 and 24. The boy had a problem from childhood. They brought him to Jesus. Come on, look at 23 and 24. Mark 9, what does it say? Jesus said to him, the father that brought him the son, if you can what? Believe. If you can what? Believe. All things are? Possible. All things are? Possible. To him who? Believe. So people that believe, things are possible. Anybody believe today God can take the impossible and make it possible? Yeah. Somebody praise him real loud. Hallelujah. I said praise him real loud. Hallelujah. I've already quoted John 1 and 12. As many as receive him, to them he gave power the right to become the sons of God. I've quoted John 3. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes shall not what? Perish but have what? Yeah. Everlasting life. Come on, let's skip over to Matthew 9, 28. Praise him, somebody. Hallelujah. Matthew 9, 28. Y'all there? Matthew 9, look what they have it up. Come on, quickly. I'm moving quickly. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to, uh, uh, to them, what did he say to them? Read real loud. Do you believe? What did he say to the blind men? Do, do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, yes. what is the Lord asking you today? Do you believe? Yes. Ask your neighbor, do you believe, do you believe that, he can do this? that he can do this? Now go ahead and answer him. Not yes to them. Yes, Lord. Come on, get that. Y'all looking at them like, yes, I believe. They're like, I can't help you. Mark 1, 14, 15. Mark 1, 14, 15. Mark 1, 14, 15. I I'm giving you a lot of scripture because what does the scripture say? So I'm trying to get in your heart every week that you have a basis to stand on, a foundation to stand on, and you know that God is looking at what you believe. Come on, Mark 1, 14, and I'm going somewhere else. Mark 1, 14, 15. Look at what it say. Now, after John was put in prison, after John was what? How many know John? Some of us got that John kind of religion. John was the forerunner of Jesus. He went telling everybody Jesus is coming, but once he got in prison, he sent Jesus a word like, are you the one? Yes, he did. Or do we look for another? Are y'all following me? See, that's how some of us are. We believe as long as everything's going well. We believe when there is no persecution. We believe when people are not talking about us. We believe when our finances are right. We believe when we got a job. We believe when we don't read the doctor report and it's not negative. We believe when everything's going well. But see, John, Jesus was telling him, you got to believe me in prison or out of prison. You got to believe me in life or in death. You got to believe me no matter what. Some of us are coming back, Pastor, I don't know if this works. I don't know if God can do this. Pastor, I know what you're saying. But see, do you believe? Amen. Just because you're in jail, just because you're going through hell, just because you're going through stuff, don't mean God changed. Right. Hebrews said, I'm the same today, yesterday, and forever. You better check your record and look at other people that's gone through, but God was in it with them. You better look at those Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. And Jesus had to step up in there. And the fourth one looked like the son of God. You better look at Daniel when he was in the lion's den. Instead of the lion eating him for lunch and dinner. He slept on the lion as a pillow. You better believe when Paul and Silas was in jail. They said we already locked up. We in the dungeon. So it's midnight. We might as well sing and pray. How many know no matter what you're going through. You might as well sing and pray. 
And if God choose to open that door, so be it. If God choose to loose the chain, so be it. But if he don't, I'm going to sing and pray. If he comes, I'm going to sing and pray. If he doesn't, I'm going to sing and pray. Is there any believers in here going to sing and pray at midnight? Somebody say no matter what. I'm going to sing and pray. You look at Hebrews 11, many men died believing God. Many prophets cut asunder believing God. And y'all like, well, I ain't trying to die. Well, if you ain't trying to die, you ain't trying to live either. He that seeketh to save his own life is going to lose it. But he that loses, like, see, when you believe something, you believe I'm going to live or die regardless. Are y'all with me? See, other words, I'm not afraid of death because I know where I'm going. I know I got another building. I know in my father's house is many mansions. I know Jesus is the way. I know I got to be absent in his body is to be present with the Lord. So I'm not going to get on the plane afraid it's going to crash. If it crashed, then I'm going to heaven. Are y'all with me? And then if I got a destiny and I hadn't finished it, it can't crash while I'm on it. So that plane got to come back up because my work is not done. My assignment is not done. So that plane and the people on the plane is protected because God gives angels charge over me. Come on, somebody. So in Isaiah 37, 36, if one angel killed 185,000, one angel killed a hundred. So if one angel can cover 185 of my demons, 185,000 of those who come against me. Jesus said, I can command legions of angels. Come on, if you look up a legion, 6,000 is one legion. So 6,000 times 12 is 72,000. 72,000 times 185,000 is 13 billion, 320 million. He give angels charge over me. There ain't but 7 billion people and a half on the earth. So if God can cover with 12 legions, 13 billion, why would I be worried about my troubles and my trials? Now you understand John 16, in this world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Is there any believers... I said, is there any believers? Now you understand God has not given us a spirit of fear? Why? You got one angel that can kill 185,000. And if he give angels charge, not just one, he give angels charge. So if I got three angels, I got three times 185,000. And you sit here talking about your money and you broke. My God has cattle on a thousand hills. And did you know the hills and the dirt belong to him? He said in Psalm 50, I wouldn't tell you. He doesn't need our money to run the church. He doesn't need our money to succeed. He allows you to participate in the plan. He gave you power to get wealth to establish his covenant. He gave you seed to sow so he can turn around and multiply it. He ain't broke. He ain't on no deficiency. He doesn't have any lack. In God, there is no lack. The trying of your faith work is patience. And when patience has fully been tried, it comes out perfect, lacking and wanting nothing. So he allowed us to go through stuff so we would believe him. He allows trials to come so we would praise him. He allows trouble to come so we would trust him. And when you trust him, he said, watch me show up. Watch me be strong. Watch me be glorified. Oh, he's coming to our rescue. Watch God do it. Come on. They brought him word. Abraham, Lazarus, Lazarus is sick. Jesus stayed where he was. They said, don't you know Lazarus is sick? He didn't move. Four days later, Lazarus died. 
He said, now let me go and do the works of God so he can be glorified. See, you didn't realize you thought the glory was in the death. No, I'm letting the devil have a few seconds. I'm letting the devil have four days. I'm letting the devil have a little room. But when I show up, glory to God. Glory to God. Martha ran out there to meet him. She had a little black attitude. If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. He said, Martha, I am the life and the resurrection. He that believe in me shall never die. And he said, do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord, I believe. He go to the house. Mary had an attitude. She wasn't going to come out. I done washed his feet. I done sat at his feet. I done done all this church work. And he wouldn't even come when I told him my brother was sick. He sat at our table. He ate our chicken. He ate our fish. So he get close to the grave. Martha come out of the house crying. Folk following behind her. Lord, if you had been here. See, that's how we are in the church. We only believe on Sunday. But when we get the bill in the mail, we said, Lord, if you had been here. See, we only believe when everything's good. But when bad stuff happens, we said, Lord, if you had been here. But Jesus said to Mary, I am. How many know he is? He's not going to be. He's not a was or has been. I am. I'm the door. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. I'm the bread. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the one that heals. I can deliver. I am. Oh, is there anybody believe? I am. How many believe he is? It looks dead. It looks done. It looks like you're counted out. But I am. How many know when your I am show up? Everything that's going wrong, he'll turn it around. Everything dead, he'll resurrect it. Everything you're going through, he'll bring you out. I am. I tell you today, there's an I am in our midst. There's an I am living among us. I am. Come on, Mary. Come on, Martha. Come on, dead Lazarus. I am. Is standing here today. I am. Has come to meet your need. I am. Has come to bring you out. I am. Have come to lift you up. I am. Has come to bring you through. I am. Bigger than what you're going through. I am. Greater than he in the world. I am able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or think. I am the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am. Somebody that knows that I am you are. Don't y'all sit here and look at me crazy like I don't believe nothing. Don't you look at the budget. Don't you look at the bills. Don't you look at we ain't built yet. Let me tell you. What you're trying to kill, God will raise it up. 
I am is on his way. I am. Oh, glory. I am. Do I have? Do I have any believers in the house? Glory, glory, somebody say in prison, out of prison, in the grave, out of the grave, my job is to believe God. How many going to believe him today? I, I didn't tend to get all excited about it. But I tell you, when you start talking about I am, it's not what I'm going through. It's not what I'm dealing with, but it's who I believe. And I believe God is able. Hallelujah. 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 Those Hebrew boys said, the God I serve is able to deliver me. And then they went on and said, if he doesn't show up, I still won't bow down. I will trust him in the furnace, out of the furnace, in my trials. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. I said, oh, glory. Somebody that trusts that I am. Hallelujah. See, 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 see. See, I'm trying to teach y'all. Y'all trying to get a little celebration going on. Because sometimes in the midst of your teaching, sometimes when you get to Cornelius' house, how many know the Holy Ghost has already showed up? When you get there, how many know Jesus? already have a plan so the bible says while peter was preaching the holy ghost fell down on them and they began to speak with tongues do i have any tongue talkers in here do i have any believers in that hey Sometimes you got to celebrate before the message is over. I am has showed up. Praise him, somebody. Praise him. Come on, praise him. Mark, Mark chapter one. You can keep standing if you can't sit. You can sit if you can. Mark chapter one. After John was put in the prison, Jesus didn't stop his ministry. Jesus didn't call it quits. Jesus didn't say, I don't know what I'm going to do because John locked up. But Jesus came to Galilee. And what did he do in Galilee? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Preaching if you can believe in me. Preaching no matter what you're going through. I am able. Verse 15. Verse 15, preaching the gospel, saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Come on, y'all believe that now. Other words, Jesus is here, and he's ready to do the works. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Come on, what did he say to them? Repent. What did he say to them? Repent and do what? Believe in the God. Come on, what did he say to them? Repent. And do what? Believe in the God. 
Not John, not Peter, not James, not something else. Believe in the gospel. Do I have any believers that believe in the gospel? Do I have any believers that believe this word can help you and sustain you? Do I have any believers that's trusting the gospel? Amen. 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 Praise him. Y'all still keeping me from getting to James. So James, I got to end, but James was upset. Because these folk were like some of the church people now. They say they believe God, but they act like the devil. They were impartial to rich folk, or partial to them and impartial to people that didn't have nothing. And so that's why he says, show me your faith by your works. Come on, go over there to that one. Go over there to that one. Praise him. Verse 14, then we'll read down, and, and, and he said, he quotes Romans. I'll come back to this next week. We got excited about I am able. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you need to shout. Sometimes you got to put your notepad down and just let your spirit rise up. Uh, Y'all find sometimes you got to just eat a little bit, and after you're full, you got to raise up and thank the Lord. Glory to God. Praise him. Praise him. Amen. James. What does it profit, my brother, if someone says he has faith but does not have words? Can faith save him? So that's where we run into the dilemma. We think it's all about words. Can faith save? Somebody say, yes, it can. Yes, it can. So his argument was, just like we have in a discussion now in our political system about the rich and the poor about taxes, about taking and cutting services. Because, see, those people sit up on uh, uh, their throne, so to speak, and, and they have no righteous uh, 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 attitude towards other people. Because, see, they're going to have a salary the rest of their life. They got health insurance. They're going to be taking care. Every cut or rule or bill they make, it doesn't apply to them. And then they go sit up on somebody's church Sunday morning, lift their hands up, sing a few hymns. Are y'all following me? Quoted through prayers. And James says, you're a hypocrite. He said, the devil believes God. So he was saying, don't let your fruit, be, a tree be known by the fruit. But he didn't change the fact that believing or faith is simply believing God. He said, there ought to be some evidence. Amen. So what does it profit? Read on, read on, read on. It says in verse 70, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, that's what he's talking about. He says, what happens? And one of you say to them, depart in peace, be warmed, and be fed. That's how believers are talking. We speak into the mountain, but we ain't believing nothing. That's right. But you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? What does it profit? Your regulations, your rules. Your, when you're sitting there making judgment, changing laws, and you don't care who you take from. That's right. That's right. And the elite is constantly becoming the elite. Yeah. But they will quote this scripture, to whom have, he's going to give more. And to hold those who don't have, he's going to take away. <laughs> That's why you better get something. You better get some knowledge. Amen. He said, that's also faith by itself if it does not have works. If faith by itself. So faith stands by itself. Believing God stands by itself. Amen. If it does not have works, it's dead. Read on. But some will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works is what he says. Show me a tree without fruit. That's what he's discussing. And I will show you my faith by my words. Amen. This James talking, not Jesus. Amen. And Jesus says faith is simply believing. Yeah, amen. And he's letting people know they say they're a believer, but they have no fruit. Amen. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. You believe that there is one God. Y'all get this? Yeah. You believe there is what? One God. Come on, read. What happened? Even the demons believe amen. and tremble. See, that's what everybody tells you. You hear this philosophy now in the world? We all believe in the same God. You know they're quoting the same God, believe in the same God, but they won't accept Jesus. That's right. yeah. God so loved his world, this world he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him. Right. So when people say we got the same faith, we believe one God, you better listen closely. Right. When they reject Jesus, we ain't on the same page. Right. The devil know God exists. He was there in the beginning with them when God created heaven and earth. But he renounces and rejects Jesus. Jesus said, I saw him fall from heaven like lightning. But you do not want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith 
by itself. He said, because it stands by without works is dead. If you do believe, there ought to be some fruit. Amen. Come on, let's keep reading. I just want you to, I got to end. He said, was not Abraham my father justified? He said, by works, when he offered Isaac his son on the altar. He said, Abraham did something because he believed God. Yes. Abraham, but the scripture said, Abraham believed God before he offered Isaac. See, you're trying to offer your tithes and offer, offer this and do this, but if you don't believe God, nothing happens. You can't put your seed in the ground and then pluck it up with your words. You got to believe this thing is coming to pass. Come on, just like y'all said, that's hard, that's hard. It ain't hard when you get a prescription from the doctor and he said, take this three times a day. On the out, and you go home and you do it religiously, but the scripture tells you men ought to always pray and not faint. But you're telling me you ain't got time to pray, but you got time for a pill. And you believe in that pill going to heal you. And the pill may heal one thing, but got side effects for another. So in other words, it never heals. It cures or makes better. But Jesus heals and he resurrects from the dead. He said, do you see that faith was working together with his works? Faith is by itself working with his works. And by works, faith was made perfect. Now let's look at, come on, can I continue to read? Read again. What does he say? Come on, y'all read again. I got it in right here. What does he say? And the scripture was fulfilled. And what did he say? And the scripture was fulfilled. See, James is putting it all in perspective. He's talking to these elitist folk that don't know how to treat other people, but yet say they're believers. Yeah. We sit up in church and we have no fruit. Mm. That's right. You know, the Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering. That's not the fruit of the Holy Ghost. That's the fruit of your born-again spirit. When you get born again, you start acting like Jesus. Your spirit start growing. And so he's saying you ought to have some fruit along with what you believe. But believing alone and don't have no evidence. But faith is simply believing God. What does the scriptures say? Scripture was fulfilled says what? Abraham, he quotes it. It says what? Come on, James said, Abraham what? Believe God. Abraham what? Believe God. God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called a friend, not because he offered up Isaac, not because what he left his parents, but because he believed. Do I have any believers in the house? Amen. Believers, stand on your feet and shout loud and give God praise. Come on, shout loud and give God praise. I thought y'all were celebrating a little earlier. Come on in.